Hello and welcome to People and Profit. I'm Charles Pellegrin. This week, we take the pulse on the world's efforts to kick its addiction to carbon and especially focus on the fast-paced growth of renewable energy, notably in China. For the first time this year, solar and wind farms have generated more electricity than coal plants, with solar energy filling most of that demand. In parallel, coal generation fell slightly over the same period. Well, those are some of the key findings by climate think tank Ember in its latest report. And their senior electricity analyst, Malgorzata Vyatros Motika, also the author of that report, joins us now. Thank you for being with us. Uh, hi, thank you for having me. Um, so this really feels uh, like an important milestone. Is it actually? How do you interpret your own uh, findings in that report? So it is a historic moment because for the first time ever, we have renewable sources overtaking coal in global um, electricity generation mix. This is important because we know that we can meet our growing energy demands with clean sources. And we, we all want clean environment, uh, healthy environment for us and future generations. So this is, this is good positive news. China and India largely responsible for this uh, for this surge. Uh, let's let's focus on China a little bit. What's what's driven this? Um, is it a top down policy making? Is it uh, private sector led? China provided over half of global uh, growth in solar and over eighty percent of global growth in wind generation. So. Clear leader, Mul multiple factors affect this. So policy and very strategic investment, not only in solar, wind, but into grids, batteries, electric vehicles, and so on. And what about the private sector's role uh, in that compared to compared to the, the, the policy making? Um, I'm not sure how to answer this, but I think that um, because of the right policy, uh, private sector invests. I and, see. And o not only in China, but also abroad. Um, so meanwhile, China announced uh, its updated climate goals uh, recently, as it does uh, every, every five years uh, since the Paris Climate Accord. Uh, for the first time, it's, uh, said, uh, a it's set a target for emissions reductions uh, as opposed to when its emissions will, will peak. Um, that target is somewhere between 7 and 10 percent reductions uh, by 2035. Uh, this has largely underwhelmed, even if China actually has a habit of, of setting low expectations and, and then later surpassing them. What's your assessment of, of these updated uh, commitments? China uh, meets their targets well ahead of time for most of, of things. We see that um, coal, the largest source there for electricity, is already uh, begin beginning to plateau. So we expect emissions for, uh, fall. How quickly, we don't know. But if they keep pace um, they current have, um, th th they will meet their target and exceed it. And can you give us a sense just of how important China is uh, from, from a global perspective? So China is hugely important. It, uh, it is uh, accounting for about one third of global demand for electricity. Um, it is uh, the major importer of uh, clean technology, uh, such as panels, solar panels. And it is uh, investing in other countries, uh, not only facilitating uh, for them having more solar or wind, but also investing in other countries. So it is very important economy. Despite these uh, great advances, China remains uh, the world's biggest producer of coal power. And for local communities in the country's coal mining regions, the changes are also set to impact their way of life. Our correspondent in China, Yan Kamenzin Brumby, sent us this report. In Datong's rural villages, one thing reigns above all. Coal. In the shadows of looming factories, generations of families have dedicated their lives to the Black Rock. Among them, Wang Hongzhi. 
My job was to get the coal from the mine and bring it down the mountain. Once it was brought to the platform, it was loaded onto trains and sent all across the country. Datong's surrounding province of Shanxi alone produces more coal than India, the world's second largest coal producer. But China is also increasingly taking on a new role as a pioneer of green energy technology. A stark change for communities that have, until recently, relied on fossil fuel for their livelihoods. Known as China's coal capital, residents of Datong have long been used to hearing thuds of heavy machinery across these hills. But as China's green energy transition gets underway, those thuds are set to subside. As solar farms like this start to cover more and more of the landscape. China already builds more wind and solar power than the rest of the world combined. Now, Beijing has pledged a further six-fold increase in its wind and solar production by 2035. But Beijing's leadership has also spoken about the need for a fair transition. It's something that climate change activist Bai Zhuan, a Shanxi local, is particularly aware of. Regarding the process of just transition, it must be people-centered and it must coordinate the relationships between the environment, economy and people's employment. They need to be prepared early, provided with some skills training and knowledge, so they can better adapt to the development of these new industries. UN estimates indicate that by 2030, up to 1.7 million coal-dependent jobs could be lost across Shanxi province. As China shifts closer to a green future, locals here hope Beijing can ensure communities like these aren't left behind. So, Malgorzata, um, there's a huge challenge that's outlined in this uh, report, which is successfully preserving the livelihoods of the people who uh, depend on coal. Uh, so what can be done here? How is it just a matter of training, of, of, of financial support? So obviously these people need to learn new skills, uh, to have uh, jobs in different sectors. <clears throat> with with boom in clean electricity, I, I believe that uh, there will be some other jobs created. China is smart in, in their strategy. I, I'm sure that they will uh, have a plan how to transition uh, these communities that uh, rely heavily on coal. Uh, how should we see the continued use of coal uh, in China as a source of electricity? Is it a, is it a backup option uh, to, to avert uh, power outages? Is it still considered to be a, 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 a crucial part of the grid? So in, in the recent years, what we see is uh, coal moving more um, to the backup role. So as they are adding more clean sources uh, like uh, solar, wind, um, they, they use coal less. So yes, they have new coal power plants, but they are smaller and they serve more like a backup um, source than the main source of the um, electricity. So how is that, is that the only reason to explain why new coal power plants are still being built to this day? I, I think this is the main reason. If I can say, we often point finger at China saying that they have a lot of coal, but we all benefit. We have the solar panels they export to us and other clean technologies, and we use other things produced in China. So whatever emission China produces is a little bit of ours too. And China is investing in batteries, so I hugely investing. So I believe that we will see less and less coal uh, generation. Mm -hmm. And we see pla beginning of plateau already in, uh, in electricity mix. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. You mentioned the huge investments in, in, in batteries, for instance. So one of the big other challenges that, that China is facing is being able to transport uh, the clean energy produced in the western part of the country uh, that's sparsely populated all the way to the eastern mm -hmm. part of the country where most of the population is, is located. Um, how have they managed to do, to, to do this? I don't have specific, you know, uh, information on this, but uh, there will be variation between regions in each country, including in China. However, China is investing heavily also in grid connections. That's the only country with increasing investment in grid connections. These are electric cables that uh, connect uh, different uh, power plants or, uh, you know, um, between different uh, regions or cities.
So simple uh, um, power cables, which you see overhead or sometimes under under uh, underground. And you say that China is the only country or the leading country in that, that invests in this? Well, uh, so they are increasing the investment in, in grids, so in, 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 conne in connectors. Other countries stagnate the investment. Is that is that the trend in general that that, that that China is making progress while other countries, the U.S. and 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 Europe are are, are lagging behind? So we see progress everywhere. Uh, we we know that over half of global economies now are past fossil fuel peak. We know that fossil fuels are declining in OECD for over uh, over a decade now. So we see progress everywhere, but. Mm, the biggest progress, also because of the scale of China economy, is, is in China. But progress is everywhere. There is no stop to. Uh, there is no stopping of this uh, progress, including in the United States under Donald Trump, with his uh, you know expressed uh, uh, disdain for for renewable energy. So, you know, actually in the USA, uh, solar did quite well uh, around the global average uh, growth. Um, uh, but demand was quite strong. And what happened was that uh, gas was expensive at the beginning of the year. So they brought more coal. I'm not saying it is the right thing. I'm saying that that was done. And usually you need some time to see policy impact on uh, on the sector. Transition will 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 continue. Mm -hmm. You have some states that are uh, cleaner than others. Malgorzata Vyatros Motika, you are senior electricity analyst at Think Tank uh, Ember. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your insights with us. Thank you. Well, that's it for this week. As usual, you can watch all of our previous episodes on the uh, People and Profit on People and Profit on the France 24 app or on the podcast platform of your choice. Stay tuned to France 24. Bye bye.